Hey, what's up guys? It's Seb from Workbench, and today we're gonna do deformations with effectors. This tutorial is brought to you by School of Motion. If you're an aspiring motion designer and wanna learn Cinema 4D, take their Cinema 4D base camp. Or you can take one of the other boot camps to build up your skills if you're already a little more advanced. School of Motion's courses are amazing, and I wish they were around when I started out. So definitely go check them out. The link is in the description below. This week we're gonna take a look at using effectors for deformations. Let's get started. MoGraph effectors can be used as deformers as well. If you go and grab a plane effector, for example, I'm gonna add it to a plane set to 200 by 200. I'm gonna set the fall off to sphere, set the effector ZX to about 100. It's not doing anything now, but if you go to deformer, you have a few options here, and you can tell it to be an object or point or polygon. I'm gonna use point for this example. You can see it's deforming the object. In your fall off, you can add more fall off. You can also use the curve and just adjust how your fall off looks. So that's the base of this effect. Let me show you how to use it. Uh, I'm gonna keep my plane and I'm going to make it editable. I'm gonna grab a plane effector and a delay effector, um, and I'm gonna make them both children of the plane. I'm also gonna grab a smoothing deformer and a displacer. So in the displacer, I'm gonna turn everything off except for the displacer, and in the displacer, I'm gonna give it a noise. I'm gonna set this one to 500, and then I'm gonna set the delta also to 500. So you can see it's already kind of working. Now I'm gonna turn that off for now. I'm gonna add a tension tag, and in the tension tag, I'm going to set this to 2, and I'm going to tell it to fix tension. And then I'm going to make two maps. Make map, make map, and here's my displacer. Now I'm going to go to my plane, go to deformations, set that to point. Then I'm going to add 50 in the Z, and you can see it's working. I'm going to turn on the smoother, and in here I'm going to increase the iterations to 20, and then I'm going to drop the stiffness down a bit. I'm going to add a restriction drag to the plane effector. And then on the plane effector, I'm going to drag one of the vertex maps that the tension tag created. All right, so now if I hit play, you can see it's kind of shaking her a little bit. I'm going to turn off the displacer. All right, you can see this is playing back way too fast. So that's what the delay effector is for. So if I go into the delay effector, I turn that on, and I set it to spring. And then I can crank up the spring a bit. You can see it's kind of just slowly slowing it down a bit. Now, if I go into the tension tag, I can increase the tension tag a bit. You can see it's just kind of slowing this down a bit. I'm going to give it a little more frames, 200, so we have a little more playback time. You can see it almost looks like a water pool. So this is the second part of the effect. And now you can just play with the settings here. You can add more delay, give it more smoothing. You can see it just kind of softens the effect a bit. You can play with different types of noise as well. Let's say I don't like that one. Maybe we go to... So as you can see, it gives you a pretty neat little animation. So the cool thing about this now is that you can use the deformers with fall off to turn on and off this effect. So you can see it's kind of stopped working. Uh, if that happens, you have to turn the displacer back on and then turn it back off. And then it goes back to working. And now you can see that we have control of where this is happening. So I can just animate this off, and voila. It gives you a nice base for an effect. So this is the base of the text effect that I showed you earlier. So here's the base of the effect. So I created W with Mo text. I gave it lots of subdivisions, made it editable. Then I follow the same steps I showed you before. Created a displacement map, gave it a shader, created a plane, set, the, set it to deform points, I added a delay, and I added a smoothing. And then the only difference that I did, that I didn't do in the previous one, is that I'm using a cube to reveal the, the next letter. How I did it is I was using a X particles VDB mesher. Now the VDB mesher is used for a lot of different things. In this case, I'm using it as a replacement to the bool. I'm gonna lock this in place here. So you grab the W, you put it in here, and then you grab the cube as well. And the cube, as you can see, is animated just like the W. And then I set the cube to intersect, 
and then when you get up here to the, oh, let me hide the W you can see it cuts out the W so they built this same functionality into R20 but you can still do it with a bool it just doesn't give you as clean geometry let me show you how that works you grab a bool grab your object stick it underneath set your bool to intersect the cube has to be above the bool is a little more finicky as well it has to be in a certain position for it to work I believe in this case yeah it's just touching the edge if it isn't touching the edge it will not work so the other thing you'll notice is that the bool leaves big holes which isn't the greatest thing in the world so what I tend to do is I'll turn off high quality and that'll fill in those holes so it gives you more of a solid surface looks a little nicer all right so that's it definitely play around with this effect there's a lot of stuff you can do with it a lot of different shapes models whatever so definitely experiment and give it a shot if you have any comments or questions leave in the comments down below if you'd like to help support what we do go to patreon.com forward slash workbench and definitely check out the blog at workbench.tv as always i'm sev and we'll see you next week Thank you.